Hello, hello, more dimmers here. And as you know, Candidates Tournament was already postponed. So I wanted to continue Akiba Rubinstein's saga. But uh, when I was uh, looking for the information about uh, Rubinstein opponents, I found this very nice miniature. And it was played, uh, you know, 13 years later uh, in 1919 in Hack. So uh, we have Gerard Oskam playing as white. He is 30 years old lawyer. Uh, from Netherlands and not only lawyer but one of the strongest um, masters in Netherlands at that time and estimated ranking 2400 and his opponent ladies and gentlemen Max Eve uh, 2400 ranking as well and he play as black and who was Max Eve for those you don't know but I think everybody should know mathematician by profession and he even got the doctorate, but also future world champion. Because in 1935, uh, he won the uh, world champion match against Alexander Aliakin. And he later was the FIDE president as well. And in 1921 until 1952, so for over three decades, uh, he won every single Dutch chess championship. So definitely the strongest, uh, you know, uh, Dutch master, chess master. Uh, but in 1919, he is only 19 years old and his uh, brilliant career starts in maybe in one or two years. So let's see what happened on the board. Gerard Oskam opened with d4. We have d5 and now bishop on g5 and it's called Levitsky attack. We have bishop on f5 and now a knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, c4. So the structure is uh, very very similar to uh, all the variations of the queen's gambit but with the light square bishop on f5 already and it can be advantage for black but it's also it's very very dangerous because this bishop uh, it's not guarding uh, you know a b7 uh, so it's very interesting miniature because a lot of players get similar position and sometimes don't know uh, what gonna happen if play not precise what should be played here according to the modern theory is for example bishop on b1 and after rook on b1 then bishop b4 with check that's quite dangerous misplacing this knight and the game can continue uh, from that position also c6 as strengthening the center and for example uh, after queen on b3 queen c7 exchanging um, the bishop for the knight and black have to play with this double pawns and semi open file uh, not for everybody but uh, but it's uh, pretty okay for both sides and also knight beyond d7 looks like quite okay a knight on c3 just normal if queen on b3 it's a very sharp line for example bishop e7 queen b7 and now rook b8 and the game could continue uh, knight b on d7 because knight was under attack now bishop on b4 can come and white can be in troubles uh, with the king still in the center very interesting lines this is what can be played here however future world champion max ever play h6 so the move looks okay yeah but think for a while what would you play as white in this position so I think it's not very difficult. Bishop on f6 and after queen on f6, queen on b3. Uh, so this was played by Gerard Oskam uh, in this game. Uh, what's the problem here? So the queen attacks b7 but also attacks d5. So gonna win one of these pawns. So what black should play in this position is something like knight on d7 and after c takes on d5, e takes on d5, queen d5, c6, queen b3, bishop e7 and now don't take, just um, just play something like bishop on d3, knight on c3, knight b on d2, uh, something like that. That's uh, very sharp and dangerous and black of course gonna play without one pawn so white should have very comfortable position here. 
Also, what would be possible, maybe more fancy queen on e7. And after taking uh, queen on b7, then queen b4 with check, exchanging the queens and knight b on d2, and the game can continue without this pawn. So these lines could be played if black want to continue without the pawn and, you know, try to somehow equalize, which would be, of course, very, very difficult. Uh, however, Max Uwe play knight on c6, setting up the trap. So uh, feel free to pause the video and find the winning uh, continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So uh, not very difficult to find queen on b7 and you attack the rook and the knight. Uh, in this position, Max ever play king on d7. And here is the problem. If you take the rook, then you're gonna lose the game. Okay, so that was the trap because a knight on c3 and you lose the queen. So uh, it's impossible to play. So after king on d7, uh, Gerard Oskam play c takes on d5, attacking the knight. So now the knight can be captured. So we have e takes on d5 and now the bishop can go on b5 pinning the knight. Of course, uh, for now, the knight is defended twice, so uh, nothing going on yet. But now, rook on b8 attacking the queen. And here is the critical moment where you had to find one of two moves. So, uh, knight on e5 is one of these moves. Very, very beautiful. And also, uh, bishop on c6 is possible. This was played uh, by Oskam in this game and after queen on c6, knight on e5, check and also attack on the queen. Uh, and in this position, Max Uwe uh, resigned the game and he resigned, of course, uh, because if he moved the king on the 8th rank, he gonna lose the rook and soon after gonna lose the queen. If he if he go to e7, then uh, that's gonna be a fork, also uh, winning both of the pieces. And if he play like, uh, for example, e6, then queen on c6, he have to go back and now queen c7 winning the rook and the game. So this is why in this position he resigned the game. Very short miniature, but very, very educational. So remember what can happen in this position. Uh, it looks like very, very normal uh, position and, you know, very silent, nothing going on, very solid. However, as you see, it can be a problem. Uh, but I would like to show you one more uh, line here. After queen on b7, not king on d7, okay? This is very interesting. So for everybody who like, you know, some tactical sharp game, look what could happen if black actually play bishop on b4 with check. So knight on c3 and now these pieces are still under attack. So let's just move them. Knight on d4, bang. And now what white can do? Uh, if white are not greedy and play something like knight on d4, just exchange, uh, castle and everything uh, can continue from here. With extra uh, piece, of course, it's easy win. However, uh, the fun starts if white takes the rook. Now, uh, king on d7, take another rook, it looks good. But now, knight f3 with check. And now, if white takes the knight, then actually is losing the game because of this powerful fork. And now, after this fork, uh, queen and the bishop actually can checkmate the white king so it's impossible so king on d1 is the only move and now bishop on c3 and now what would you do actually feel free to pause the video as white and find the only winning continuation for white so imagine you are greedy and you are now in the trouble serious troubles and you still can win this as white while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So, 
if you think you can take G takes on F3, so take this knight, actually I have bad news for you because whatever you calculate, maybe you missed bishop on B4. Very strong move, very strong move. What's the idea? This is the idea. Checkmate is coming and you can do anything about that. Okay, so queen on b8 is the only move and then queen on b2 and now if you don't want to be checkmated you have to sacrifice your queen and now bishop c2 with check and now you can move the, the king wherever, doesn't really matter, uh, queen on b4, I, I just show you one line but all the lines uh, finish the same way, so uh, c takes on d5 and now king e7. Uh, white can connect the rooks, so now everything looks good. However, queen b5, king d2, queen d3 with check, king e1, and now queen c3, king e2, bishop d3, and I think everybody knows that, how to finish that, queen c2, and now we have a checkmate. So, g takes on f3 just doesn't work. And if you take b takes on c3, I have a bad news for you. It also doesn't work. Queen on c3, and now you have a checkmate. So you have to do something about that. g takes on f3. It looks pretty good here, yeah? Queen a1 with check, king d2. Now queen b2, king have to move, so e1. Now queen c3, king d1 bishop c2, king c1, bishop d3, king d1, queen c2, and it looks like everything is fine, there is no checkmate here, the problem is there is another checkmate on c1. So as you see, you can't take the bishop, you can't take a knight, uh, the only proper move is c takes on d5. And then the idea is bishop on b5 with check and uh, white gonna win. So uh, there are a couple of lines, I will just show you that this one, the most dangerous one, doesn't work. Because now bishop on b5 with check, uh, king have to move somewhere, there are not, not much choice, so a king on d6. Queen on f8 with check and black has a choice to get checkmated uh, in the center or exchange the queens, but if they exchange the queens, g takes on f3 and white have, you know, extra rook and extra exchange, so of course enough to win the game. So yeah, I hope you like these lines <laughs> and let's go back to the final position. In this position, Max Oeuvre resigned the game. And if you like this video, press a like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. Leave the comment, how do you like the miniatures? That was the first one on my channel, so maybe I should, uh, you know, show more of them here. And if you don't want to miss any, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.